Hey, what's going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here uh, to bring on the eight game, uh, game one NBA slate on DraftKings. Really, really cool that DraftKings added this. So if you guys are kind of confused what I'm talking about, um, there's a four game slate on Monday, which is, you know, all, just all the games on Monday, but they also added an eight game slate for the, for the games on Monday and Tuesday. So all the game ones for, for NBA. Um, so we're going to talk about the eight game slate. Um, now, they do have some decent sized tournaments here, too, so I figured why not make a video? I think, again, this is a really cool idea here from DraftKings. Uh, but first, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, my name's DK. I make daily videos breaking out NBA, NFL, PGA, and eSports, daily fantasy sports sites. Um, before we get into the breakdown, uh, thank you guys again for all the support. Currently right now, 4.19 thousand subscribers. Uh, my goal is to hit 5K by the end of the month. So right now, guys, the easiest way to support me. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload, you know when I go live, um, and spread the word. If you have friends that play DFS and you like the content, you're making money, just spread the word. Uh, if you can't watch the videos for some reason, I also do upload an Apple podcast. The link is in the description below. It's just the DK DFS show. Um, you know, if you could leave a, a five-star rating and review there, that would also be greatly appreciated. But, all right, with that all out of the way, let's jump into the video. So, uh, again, let's uh, let's talk about this eight game slate. Pretty excited um, to talk about it. Let's go over all the odds first, though, before we get into the player by player breakdown. So we have the Jazz and the Nuggets. A big news that came out uh, after I made my video for uh, the four game slate on Monday is we have Mike Conley ruled out. Um, so that is a huge boost to a guy like Jordan Clarkson. He's three eight, I think, on the four game slate. Uh, he's a little bit more expensive on this slate. But Clarkson now is obviously one of the better plays uh, for, for Monday's four-game slate. I think he's still a solid play for this slate as well. It's a boost to Joe Ingles, too. I think runs a little bit more points. Uh, and then potentially, uh, you know, a sleeper value, maybe a guy like Emmanuel Moudier if he's available to go. But yeah, right now, again, Denver is a five-point uh, favorite. It's the 216 over-under. So it's a pretty ugly game. But again, I think there is some value there. Nets Raptors, a 222 over-under. Raptors are nine and a half point favorites. Uh, I was pretty high on the Raptors for the four game slate. I still like them quite a bit, uh, but there is this slate right now is this eight game slate is setting up definitely for the stars and scrubs build. Um, and then we have 76 or Celtics to 219 over under. Celtics are five and a half point favorites. We have the Mavs, Clippers to 230 over under. Clippers are six point favorites. Magic Bucks is 225 over under. Bucks are 12 point favorites, so obviously some blowout risk there. I think though there is some pretty solid value actually with the Magic. We'll get to obviously in a bit. Uh, Heat Pacers a 216 over under. Miami are three and a half point favorites. A Thunder Rockets a 225 over under. Thunder one and a half point favorites. And we have the Blazers, the Lakers. Uh, it's a 230 over under. Lakers are five and a half point favorites. So let's do it. Let's start with center guys. And at the top is Anthony Davis. So. Um, I am really, really high on both AD and LeBron in this slate. Um, I think they look amazing. We're going to get 38 to 40 minutes out of these guys as long as the game stays close. And this is like the best possible spot here against Portland that plays absolutely no defense. So I love the Lakers. I really think you're going to want one of those guys in your lineup to pair with Harden. Right now, that's what's setting up. Obviously, again, we'll get to Harden in a sec, but there's no Russell Westbrook. You're a bold man if you fade James Harden with no Westbrook, especially in the playoffs. It is a revenge game, too, against OKC, if you guys into that. But, yeah, AD, LeBron, I love these guys as sped up. I think you're going to want one of those Lakers, whether it be AD, whether it be LeBron. Who do I prefer? I think I slightly give the edge to LeBron over uh, Anthony Davis just because uh, the Blazers do have some size. Uh, like, who is going to guard LeBron on Portland? It's not going to be Lillard or CJ. Uh, Zach Collins is, is banged up. Um, is it going to be Mello? I mean, Mello is a terrible defender. Are they going to try to throw Gary Trent Jr. on him? So I obviously love both both Lakers. I think I slightly give the edge, though, to LeBron over AD right now. Joel Embiid is a guy I was really high on for the for the four-game Monday slate. I still like him. I still think you can get to him. because I uh, Again, with no Ben Simmons, he is just going to uh, have enormous usage in this offense. He's going to play close to 40 minutes, too, in the playoffs. The minutes go up on these guys. A guy like Joel Embiid, who usually plays like 32, 34-ish minutes and is an amazing point per minute guy, he's going to go up to like 40 minutes. And the price is under 10K. So I still like Embiid, but I think I give the, the slight edge to the Lakers stars right now and James Harden. I think you could get to all three on the slate because there is some value. 
And that's, again, that's what I'm kind of setting up for right now is the Stars and Scrubs build. Jokic at 9-4. Uh, I'm not going to get to him over guys who can beat AD and Harden, LeBron. Uh, Nurkic, you guys know I love playing Yusuf Nurkic. He's 9K. Not for me, though, in this slate. Kind of the same thing with Vucevic. I know there's no Aaron Gordon. Uh, he's going to be, like, uh, he's going to shoot the ball a ton. And if Orlando has any chance of keeping it close, we're going to see a big game from Booch. But I, I just can't prioritize him right now over some of the studs I, that I just mentioned. Porzingis, I still have interest at 8.6. Uh, I think he was 8.3 on the Monday slate, so his price went up a little bit. Uh, I mean, the Clippers, again, they're going to throw everything at Luka. So uh, Porzingis is is the guy that individually the match looks good, right? The match against Zubak, Montrezl Harrell, not really scared of them, whereas Luka is going to have, um, not Harden, um, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George defense. So I still like Porzingis. I think the upside is pretty massive on him. The issue with him is, He's fouled out in three of the last four games. He's a guy that will be in some foul trouble. So that is a concern, definitely. But if he gets 40 minutes, don't be surprised if Porzingis breaks the slate and goes for like 60 plus, 70 plus. So I still have interest in Porzingis at that price. I love his upside. Yet I'm not going to get to go bear. Bam and a bio, Jimmy. I don't mind, but on this slate, I, I'm not going to get to them either, most likely. I'm not going to get to Horford. Jared Allen. On this slate, I mean, again, I like him, but uh, not on the eight-game slate. Uh, pass on Turner, pass on Adams. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit worried on Montrez's minutes. I'm not going to get to him either. There's a lot of mouths to feed, too, for the Clippers. Ibaka and Gasol kind of splitting the center minutes. Now, Ibaka's status is up in the air. If he can't go, uh, could make uh, Mark Gasol actually a viable punt uh, and would make Chris Boucher a viable punt as well. I'm not paying 4-8 for Tice against Embiid. Brooke Lopez actually does intrigue me at 4-7. Uh, he has had, I mean, he's going to probably play 30 minutes in this one. He's been a pretty solid point-per-minute guy. So I actually think he is viable on the slate. Uh, let's see. Uh, other options, again, Boucher could become viable if he is out. I, I would think we probably get at least 15 minutes from him. Uh, Dwight Howard, JaVel McGee uh, are viable punts too. Again, we know Portland runs big, so I don't know how much like really they're going to want to run AD against like, a guy like Yusuf Nurkic. Like I think they're going to want Dwight or McGee on him for, for a good amount of the game. And Dwight and McGee are good point per minute guys too. So I think their potential value plays for sure. Again, Gasol, this is kind of dependent on Ibaka news. If Ibaka's out, we could get like 30 minutes from Mark Gasol. So I would have interest there if, uh, if Ibaka is out. Zach Collins status is up in the air. He did not return that last game. So I mean, it could make a viable punt, like a Wenyan Gabriel who's min price, but he's not, uh, I don't know how many minutes he would get, so it would be a riskier play. Let's see, uh, other options. I, me I mentioned Cantor in my last video. This is strictly a GPP play, but he has gotten good run against Philly in the regular season. Uh, and there's obviously potential for Tyson getting foul trouble against Joel Embiid. So does Brad Stevens go to Cantor? Does he go to Robert Williams? Or does he use all three centers? And then that would hurt everyone's value. But if it's just Tice and it's just Cantor and Tice gets in foul trouble, you could see 20 plus minutes out of Cantor. He's a really good point per minute guy. So I like his upside for GPPs. Bradley, again, this is strictly a GPP play too, but going up against Jokic, there is potential for Gobert to get in foul trouble. Tony Bradley is a really good point per minute guy. If Gobert gets in foul trouble and we get like 20 minutes from Tony Bradley, he could definitely get you there. Uh, but yeah, right. Not a cash game play. Um, Robert Williams, again, don't know who's the backup center for, for Boston. Is it going to be Robert Williams? Is it going to be Cantor? Or is he going to use all three? Gary Clark's min price. Uh, I don't think we're going to have Aaron Gordon available. I think he's a viable punt. And now how many minutes he gets is more in question, right? He could get like 20 minutes. He could get maybe closer to 30. But I think that is going to wrap it up for center. Yeah, so let's move on to power forward. Giannis Antetokounmpo is at 10-5. Um, I mean, we're going to get pretty good minutes from, from Giannis here, but do they need him in, in this game against Orlando? With no Aaron Gordon, there's definitely some blowout risk. I think, you know, Giannis makes for an interesting contrarian play. Not a lot of people are going to get to him. You know, on this eight-game slate, I'm prioritizing one of the Lakers stars and James Harden. So I think most people kind of do the same as well, so that's going to make Giannis lower-owned. I mean, if, if we get, like, 35 minutes out of Giannis Antetokounmpo, he could absolutely crush his 10-5 salary. It's just, uh, you know, there's some blow. There's risk with Giannis. But um, I have interest, again, more of a contrarian play, though. I'm not going to get to the Boston guys uh, on this slate, at least. Uh, there's a very balanced team. Kemba's going to play normal minutes, too. So not going to try to figure out which one of those wings has a good game. 
Warren and Jimmy Butler hate each other, but not for me on this slate. Uh, Siakam, I still think is viable at 7-7, but I think the price point looks a little bit better on a guy, Fred Van Fleet, who we'll get to in a bit. Um, I do like the Toronto guys. It's a really good matchup. There is some blowout risk there, too, but I think getting some exposure to Toronto on this slate is not the worst idea. Uh, Tobias, uh, I would rather have Joel Embiid, but uh, you are going to have to pay premium for Embiid. So don't hate the idea of getting to Tobias if you can't get to Embiid. Again, no Ben Simmons. Harrison and Embiid, the offense is going to run through these guys. So I don't hate the idea of getting to Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris. I think he's a viable play in the mid-range. I'm going to pass on Horford and Revenge game. I'm not getting to Gordon Hayward or MPJ. Aaron Gordon doesn't look like he's going to be available to play. I think that makes some some decent value here in Orlando who we'll get to in a bit. I'm not going to pay 6-5 for Kuzma, even in a really good spot. It's AD. It's LeBron for me. Let's see. The OKC guys, it's a really good spot. Uh, the Mets will still, like, I think the Mets will go up on Gallinari, but I don't know if I can get to him on this one either. Let's see. Uh, other options. It kind of gets gross once once you scroll down here. Um, again, Zach Collins status up in the air. OG, if he plays, would become viable uh, punt option under 4K. If he's out, could make Norman Powell a pretty solid play in a really good matchup. Royce O'Neal, I'm still pretty high on him at 3-6. And we now have Mike Conley out. Like Those main five guys for Utah are going to play huge minutes. Royce O'Neal is usually a guy I don't really like getting to, but we're going to get like 35 minutes from Royce O'Neal. As long as nothing crazy happens, as long as he doesn't get in foul trouble or the game blows out. So I really like Royce O'Neal right now, 3-6. I think he's one of the best value plays of the day. I think he's a really safe value option right now. Uh, James Ennis could be one of those guys potentially for value. Like, who? someone's going to have to uh, help Vucevic scoring. Uh, like, we probably get somewhere around 25-ish minutes from James Ennis. He's 3.3K. I think he's certainly a viable punt here. And I mentioned Mike Scott, too. Boston, they have a lot of wings, so I could see Mike Scott getting 20, 25-ish minutes. He's not a bad point-per-minute guy. Uh, again, with no Ben Simmons out of the offense, gets a slight boost, too. So I would have some interest in Mike Scott. Niang, could, the minutes could go up on him, but I don't know if I would get to him at 3-2. Um, I think that about wraps it up. So let's move on to small forward. Uh, Luca, I would just rather get to Porzingis. I don't like the matchup as much for, for Luca as I do for Porzingis. LeBron, AD, again, I love these Lakers guys in, in this match against Portland. We're going to get 38 to 40 minutes as long as the game stays close and there's no foul trouble. So I love LeBron. I love AD. I probably slightly give the edge to LeBron because, again, like I mentioned, who is going to guard him on Portland? So really like LeBron. Really like AD on this one. Kawhi Leonard, uh, don't know if I'm going to get to him on this slate. Uh, again, they have a lot of mouths to feed, and he's at 9-6. They have Lou Will, Lou Will and Montrez back. If I was going to take a shot in a Clippers forward, it would be Paul George at 8-3. Let's see. Again, Jimmy, TJ Warren, they don't like each other, but not for me in this slate uh, at 7-5. I still think Jimmy could go for 40-plus, but I'm going to pass. Uh, let's see. Other options. Kind of gets gross once we get to this range of small forwards. Not a whole lot I like here. Joe Ingles is a guy I do like at 4-9. I mean, he's going to play huge minutes. He'll probably run the point a decent amount, too. So I know the match, like, this game's kind of gross. But no, with Mike Conley and Bojan out of the out of the offense, like, there is a lot of usage to go around here. So I have interest in Joe Ingles for sure at, at under 5K. I do like his upside quite a bit there, even in a bad spot. Terrence Ross is at 4-6, and someone's going to have to score the ball for Orlando. So I actually don't hate the idea of getting to Terrence Ross. Normally, a guy I don't like playing but because he's more score independent. But Orlando is really, really thin. I think their rotation could be tightened up. Like, maybe they run an 8-8 eight, eight or 9-man rotation in the playoffs. So, yeah, I have interest there in, in, in Terrence Ross. Powell, this is strictly dependent right now on OG and Newbie. If he can't go, I think he starts and probably gets over 30 minutes, and he's a good scorer. It's a good matchup, so I do like Dorman Powell's value play if uh, if OJ Anunoby is out. Uh, Garrett Temple's at 4-4. Him, Joe Harris, I have interest. I mean, again, someone's going to have to help Levert score, so I think Temple and Joe Harris are, are those guys. Both probably get over 35 minutes. It's not really the best spot, but they're both at pretty cheap price points. I like them for value. Uh, let's see. Eric Gordon... Um, so I'm interested to see what they do with his Mets. They limited him in his first couple games back to 20 to 25 Mets. He played 20 and then 23 Mets. How many Mets do we get at Eric Gordon? If he's off his Mets restriction, I really like him at 4K. 
with no Russell Westbrook, like he would be the number two in the offense. Now, the concern is he is a little bit more scoring dependent, so still has a low floor if his shot's not falling. Uh, and he could potentially be on a minutes limit. But if he's no minutes limit and he's starting, and we get like 35 minutes out of Eric Gordon with no Russell Westbrook, like I think he's one of the best value plays and the guy that has huge upside. Like You could see 40-plus fantasy points from Eric Gordon here. Um, let's see. Like KCP, Danny Green, do the Lakers like tighten up their rotation in the playoffs? I think it's definitely possible. Uh, but what you need out of these guys, they have to hit their corner threes. So I don't hate it getting to Danny Green or KCP, but they really have to knock down those threes. Other options, uh, let's see. Hozonia potentially at 3-2 if Zach Collins is out, maybe get some, some more run, but there's probably better value options that I already mentioned on the slate. All right, let's move on to shooting guard. So yeah, Harden with no Russell Westbrook in a revenge spot against OKC. We're going to see 40 minutes out of James Harden here. Like, he could go for 90 in this game. Like he's going to shoot the ball a ton. I love James Harden. Uh, I, I think, really, your safe option right now is you pair James Harden with one of those Lakers studs to start your lineup. Uh, I just think the upside is enormous. Now, could... Harden only go for 55 to 60 fancy points. Yes, possibly. Uh, and, and then that would make, you know, some of those other guys, you know, potentially more in the mid-range become more viable. But you're a bold man if you fade James Harden uh, with no Russell Westbrook in the playoffs. Now, Donovan Mitchell does become more viable with no Mike Conley. I think the upside is still there. But am I going to prioritize him over guys like Harden, guys like those Lakers studs? Probably not. Like, I would rather get to the Jazz value, right? A guy like Clarkson, a guy like O'Neal, a guy like Joe Ingles, two down to Mitchell at 8 2. Now, that doesn't make Mitchell out of play, it just makes him more contrarian. Well, Verts at 7 9, I mean, I still have interest in him. He is the guy, he is their go to guy. Again, I know the matchup is not great against Toronto, but in a close game, we're going to see 35 minutes. And if you're a guy that's going to use some Toronto guys, it, it doesn't. It, I think it does make sense to run it back with Levert, right? Because if Brooklyn is going to stay in this game, I would say like most likely it's going to be because of a big game from Karis Levert. Now, could he have an off game? Could we see like Temple or Joe Harris kind of carry them? Yes, but I, again, I would say most of the time, if, if Brooklyn is in this game, it's going to be because of Karis Levert. You saw the upside the last two games: fifty-five and sixty-one fancy points. The upside is there, so I like him. Uh, definitely still on this slate. CJ's at 7-8. I'm not going to get to him. Um, just just not for me. Again, the back injury still does worry me, too. I'm passing on Boston. The OKC guys with Schroeder back. I, I mean, it's a great match against Houston that played no defense. So I think they're still viable. But, you know, whether it is it going to be CP3, is it going to be SGA, is it going to be Schroeder? Trying to figure out who it's going to be that has the big game is a little bit more difficult. So I'm probably not going to do it on this one. Um, other options. Let's see. Lou Williams, I think, is still viable. The price is more down on him, right? He's 5'4". He was 6K on Mondays for, for Monday's four-game slate. I mean, we could see 30 minutes out of Lou Williams here. And you guys know the upside is, is really high in look. So I like him in the mid-range. I think he goes a little bit lower owned. He's probably my favorite clipper on this slate. Uh, just because uh, if he's knocking down those threes, like he will continue to shoot and he could get extended. And we see Lou Williams, like he's gone easily for 40 plus uh, many of times. So yeah, I have interest there. Schroeder's at 5'4". I think he probably looks the best out of the OKC guys for their prices. I mean, we're going to get over 30 minutes from Schroeder, probably 35 in a really good match against Houston that runs small ball. So it really makes sense. Like it matches up well for OKC. Like, they're going to run CP3, SJ and Schroeder out there a ton, and Gallo. Like, those four are going to play pretty good minutes. So, I mean, I guess Gallinari is still more up in the air, but I feel more confident, again, with, with the guards' minutes. Um, none, I'm going to pass on. He's just not playing well uh, at 5-2. So let's talk about the Orlando guys. And Fournier's at 4-9. He's going to go. Uh, don't worry about that. Again, someone is going to have to score the ball besides Vucevic. So, and we have 
uh, Fournier at, at under 5K. Normally a guy I don't like playing, but I think there really is potential for value here on, the, on this Orlando Magic team. So I have Vincent Fournier. Clarkson, the price went up on him a bit, but I still like it 4-5. I mean, he's probably going to start, probably get over 30 minutes, and he's the guy that's going to shoot the ball when he's out there. Uh, sure, like, the worry is he is a little bit more scoring dependent, but if his shot is falling, he has potential for upside of, like, 30-plus fancy points easily, even in a bad spot. Rivers, Macklemore, I mean, I just prefer Eric Gordon uh, to to those guys. Uh, now, again, that's kind of dependent on whether Eric Gordon is going to be on a minutes restriction or not. Other options, uh, not a whole lot. I'm super excited about again KCP, Dane the Green. If you want to take a shot on one of those guys and hope to hit their threes, it's fine. I think that's really it though. So let's move on to point guard. Uh, I already talked about really liking Harden. Lillard's at 11-4. I just I'm just gonna rather get to Harden over Lillard. Oh sure, Lillard, right? He's been playing out of his mind. Can still get you there at 11-4, but. For me, it's definitely Harden over Lillard uh, at a similar price point. Kyle Lowry at 8-1. I think goes a little bit overlooked on this slate just because we have Harden, we have those Lakers guys, and we have Fred Van Fleet that looks a lot better for his price. So, I mean, I don't hate going to Lowry over Fred Van Fleet because he's going to be a lot lower owned. I mean, we're going to get 40 minutes out of Lowry, Fred Van Fleet, and Pascal Siakam as long as the game stays close. And Brooklyn, like, this is an amazing matchup. So I still have Anderson Lowry. I think he's more of a contrarian play. Again, CB3, SGA, Schroeder. I probably like Schroeder the best out of those three for his price. Not super excited about the Pacers, guys. I mean, Brogdon is under 7K, but not going to get to him. Kemba, I still think, is viable at 6'6". Minutes restriction is lifted. I think we probably get 35 minutes out of him. The issue is, is Boston is a really, really balanced team. Jamal Murray still intrigues me, too, at 6'2". Um, and we have Conley out of there, so he's probably going to be matched up against like Donovan Mitchell or Jordan Clarkson. Not the best defender. So, uh, and we're going to see 35 minutes out of Jamal Murray here. Again, kind of an ugly game, but I do like the upside quite a bit on Jamal Murray here. Not going to get to Smart. Uh, again, I mentioned Schroeder. He's probably my favorite OKC guard. I also have some interest in Eric Bledsoe. The risk with targeting these Bucks guys is there is definitely potential for a blowout. But I, I think we'd probably get 30 minutes out of Eric Bledsoe here. And he's at 5.2K. So, don't know if I'm going to get to him, but I, I like his upside there at, his, at that price. The Philly guards is probably going to be a pass for me. Like, one of Milton, Jay Rich, and Burks are going to get you there. Like, Burks would be my preferred target at 4-1 uh, to Milton and, and Jay Rich. But don't know if I'm going to get to them uh, on this slate. And I mentioned Clarkson. I also like Goran Dragic quite a bit at 4-4. Uh, Kendrick Nunn has really been struggling, not shooting the ball well. And, I mean, we could see close to 30 minutes from Goran Dragic. He's a really good scorer and a guy that has upside, even when Jimmy and Bam are playing. So I do like Dragic quite a bit at 4-4. I think he's one of the better value plays of the day on this slate. Other options. Now let's get to Orlando. Markel Fultz and DJ Augustine, I think, look really good for value, too. Someone is going to have to score the ball besides Vucevic. So Fournier, Ross, Fultz, and Augustine, I think all look really solid. I think Orlando could, or could tighten up the rotation. Maybe go to like an eight-man rotation. So I do like these guys quite a bit, um, the, the Magic guys. Uh, where is, yeah, DJ Augustine's at 3-4. That is too cheap. So let me just finish up with Orlando here. But I think that they definitely have some upside. Now, sure, again, there they're for sure is blowout risk. But so Vucevic at 8 7. He obviously has upside. Bryce prefer other studs in the slate. I don't think Aaron Gordon plays. He did not participate in the scrimmages. Doesn't look like he's getting close to doing contact work. Like he's not going to be available. So Ross is at 4 6. Fournier's at 4 9. They have no Jonathan Isaac. He's out for the season. And then Fultz and Augustine. These, those four guys, like, can put the ball in the bucket. I think at least one of those guys will absolutely crush his salary. Um, you know, my favorite is probably either Fultz or Augustine because they're the cheapest. Fultz has, has had some good upside games. Uh, and we're probably, again, I think their closing lineup will be Augustine, Fultz, Ross, Fournier, and Vooch. Now, sure, James Ennis could be in there, maybe over one of those guards, but... 
that like, that is their best offensive lineup right now. If Eric, if Aaron Gordon is out, it's Vooch, it's Gore, it's Fournier, it's Ross, it's Fultz, and it's Augustine together. Like Orlando definitely will use Augustine and Fultz together. So I like getting to one of those Orlando guys, even in a game that, that has some bullet rest. I just think there's huge upside there. Again, I don't even mind James Ennis at three three. Uh, like we probably will get twenty five to thirty minutes out of him. So there is some value here for Orlando for sure. Um, I think they look pretty good. So, I think that's really going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. Um, if you haven't enjoyed the content so far, would really appreciate it if you'd leave a like button on the video, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and spread the word if you do like the content. I will be live streaming for Monday's four-game slate, probably 30 to 45 minutes before lock on my YouTube channel. I'll go over everything, all the news that we get. I'll give you guys cash game plays, GPP plays, give you a team-by-team -team breakdown, and answer any questions you guys have at answer any questions you guys have at the end, as well as give you guys a core to build your lineups around. So uh, thanks again, guys. I hope you guys all have a good rest of your Sunday, and I will see you all tomorrow in the live stream.